the mountains cover about one fifth of the Earth's surface. Without them, the world would be a flat surface. Climbing from the base towards the peak of the mountain, one will come across a variety of living creatures. The lives of these animals living in the mountains are unique depending on surrounding atmosphere. Mountains are often windy and the chilling wind makes the animals living on mountains to lose heat very fast. An adult can survive under these harsh conditions. But for the young and little ones, it can be fatal. So, the ground squirrels and prairie dogs in Rocky Mountains, pikas living on the Tibetan Plateau, and the giant mole rats of Bale Mountains of Ethiopia all live almost all their life in underground burrows. It is a safe heaven for them, where they sleep, hibernate, and raise their young ones. The mountains have caves that are cold, dark and wet. These caves provide refuge to many animals from bad weather and enemies. Bats rest in caves during the day and come out at night to hunt. While bears and pumas or mountain lions use caves as homes where they store their food. Blue-spotted salamanders live in the northern Appalachian Mountains in USA, where it gets very cold and chilly in winter. These amphibians survive in winter by hibernating underground and emerging early when there is snow still on the ground. They do this to reach early to the lake, where they breathe. Even when they reach the water and die, they have to survive the near freezing condition. Some animals just leave the higher slopes of cold mountains. This is called migration. This is easy for birds since they can fly, but more difficult for animals, reptiles and amphibians as they have to walk down the slopes. Ground squirrels, prairie dogs, peacocks, and giant mole rats in Bale Mountains of Ethiopia all spend their lives in underground burrows. During winters, mountains are covered with snow. As a result, food is difficult to find. Even if the snow does not cover the mountains, finding food during winters is an uphill task. The animals of Tibetan Plateau no option but to survive on dry, dead plants for most of the year as green shoots are available only for three months in a year. With the arrival of summer, the snow melts and the mountains are exposed to dry sunlight. It is now time for the mountains to clothe themselves with flowers and green. This also attracts many kinds of insects and birds. These visiting birds take advantage of the insects and other inverted rates that start appearing here. The northern wheat eater is an insect eating bird. It spends the months of winter in Africa. In the season of spring, these birds leave their winter homes and fly thousands of kilometers to the high altitude meadows of the Alps. Some of the birds go to the extreme of Greenland and even Alaska. These birds nest in their summer homes. And in the later part of the summer, they make a return journey with their offsprings across land and sea to Africa. These are vultures. Soaring high up in the sky. From their height, they keep an eye on the dead animals lying below on which they feed. This is the Lemurgaya, a kind of vulture that has an interesting way of fulfilling its needs of proteins. It picks up the bone of a dead animal and soars high up in the sky. Once it has reached the required height, the bird let goes of the bone from its claws. The bone races down towards the mountain rocks and as it hits the rocks, 
it breaks into pieces. The lemurgaya then races down to the broken bowl and feeds on marrow filled with nutrition. This large vulture is not bigger than the vulture of the Andes. The Andean condor is the largest flying bird on planet Earth. When it spreads its wings, it spans the length of a small car. It also feeds on dead enemies. About 600 closest relatives of the human race live in the jungle of Uganda, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. These gentle giants are the gorillas. They are an impressive sight. Anyone looking at them can form the opinion that they are deadly wild animals ready to kill as shown in many movies. But the truth is totally opposite. They may weigh about 180 kilograms and are really huge but they are shy animals and live on plants and fruits. That is why they have been called gentle giants. If the mountain forests disappear, then the last gorillas will also disappear with them. Mountains offer difficult terrain and mountain animals have to learn to get around such terrains. Two animals, the ibex and chamois, living in the Alps and Pyrenees of Europe, have mastered the art of climbing and jumping. For them, jumping from one rock to another and climbing almost vertical slopes is a child's game. In summers, they feed in meadows high on Alps and descend to lower levels when the weather turns cold in autumn. Survival of the newborn babies of the animals have to be timed in such a manner that the young ones can go on to grow up into an adult. These young ones are most vulnerable when it is cold and when they don't get food to eat. So the mammals and birds that breed in harsh mountains wait for the conditions to be in favor of their young ones before they start their courtship and breeding. The Tibetan antelopes find the month of June ideal to give birth to their offspring. Female snow leopards give birth to their cubs in late March or April. The cubs remain dependent on their mother for almost two years and during this time the mother is constantly on the lookout for food. Blizzards are one of the greatest hazards that challenge the survival of the antelopes. These blizzards may sweep across the plateau even during midsummers, killing many young antelopes. Predatory leopards are another challenge that the antelopes have to face. These leopards have their own young ones to feed and are always on lookout for a weak antelope. These snow-clad mountains and lush cloud forests form the East Africa's highlands. It stretches towards north from the Zambezi River to the Jordan River past the Red Sea. These East African highlands are home to seven highest mountains in Africa and the highlands include some important areas for agriculture. Farmers grow coffee, sugarcane, cotton, tea and flowers. Most mountains in East Africa are either volcanoes or great masses of rock forced by volcanic activity. So the rift valleys were created by same gigantic processes deep in the earth. About 7 billion years ago, two plates of the earth's crust, namely the African and the Arabian plates, began to settle. The molten lava inside the earth pushed to surface, creating volcanoes. This lava could not find an outlet and the pressure it exerted push the Earth's surface higher. Not all mountainous regions of Africa have been colonized. But some highland areas of Ethiopia are among the most densely populated places in Africa. Four million people live in Addis Ababa, the modern capital of Ethiopia. Several ancient Christian churches are carved from the rock of Lalibela 
which is the old Ethiopian capital. A cool sanctuary in a very hot region is the extinct volcano, which has 11 glaciers and many exotic plants. The snow and streams of Mount Elgon provide water for several million people in Uganda and Western Kenya. Three extinct volcanoes form famous snow-capped mountains of Kilimanjaro. That windy forest is the lush green forest with many different species of animals including mountain gorillas and chattering colobus monkeys. Gelada baboons live on in the remote parts of the Ethiopian highlands, perching on inaccessible cliffs. Mountains and highlands may appear peaceful from far, but they can be one of the most inhospitable and deadly places to live in. Yet, they have a magnetic charm to attract the thrill seekers, mountaineers, and skiers. Unlike other places on planet Earth, very few people have made these highlands and mountains their homes. The reason being, there is not enough support from the nature for survival of humans. The cold, windy, and wet climate makes life uncomfortable and the steep, rocky slopes are difficult for farming. The mountains have a world of their own and are often inaccessible to outsiders. Yet human beings have taken up the challenge and tried to explore the region that beholds the mountains. The early explorers have written about problems of mountain travel. It took explorer Marco Polo several years to cross the mountains of Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan. The mountains are barriers separating different countries or regions with different cultures. In tropics, people live in open highlands as the climate here is cooler and comfortable as compared to lowlands which is hot, sticky and infested with insects. The tile soils of Ethiopian highlands have provided food to that country for centuries. Similarly, fertile volcanic soils of the central Mexico too were the support system for the great Aztec civilization. Not all mountains are freezing, rocky wasteland. Human civilizations have made these mountains their home for centuries, but have left little sign of their living here. Some tools and other related things discovered by archaeologists at the ancient settlements of Klapakoya and Tepexpan reveal that they were crafted some 20,000 years ago. What drew them to such island area? This could be due to soil rich in minerals which encouraged plant life. They discovered that it was possible to grow fruits and vegetables in this soil. As they started settling in, they modified their environment to fulfill their needs. The early people cut down trees to build houses, to collect firewood, and later to clear land for the crops. The remains of an early town in Klapakoya dates back to 3,500 years. No one has been able to say how these people lived, but they grew crops, fished, and hunted animals and birds. The city of Teotihuacan was a home to thousands of people in 650 AD. Many other people later came to know about the prosperity of this region and gradually started moving. About 600 years back, a tribe called Aztecs arrived. They started building city of Tenochtitlan on an island in the lake Texcoco. The Aztecs drained part of the lake to build their city. Floating platforms of reeds and leaves called Chinampas were built to grow crops. The farmers and fishermen of Tenochtitlan traded in fruits, vegetables, animal skins and fish with their neighbors who traveled to the city's market. Different parts of this place were connected by a network of canals. This planned city had palaces, temples, zoo, plazas, markets 
and aqueducts carrying water from the spring. Within 200 years, these highlanders were able to conquer the neighboring places. In 16th century, when the Spanish arrived, they were amazed at the lifestyle and compared it with the greatest cities of Europe. The people settling on mountains have always been changing their surroundings for a better living. From cutting down of trees to building towns and villages, the mountains are being given a total facelift by the inhabitants. While some use the natural resources intelligently, others destroy it beyond repair. One such intelligent people who were expert farmers were the Inca people of South America. They had realized that cutting down the trees will wash away the fertile soils. So, they built terraces on the steep slopes. These steps helped them not only to grow crops, but also kept the fertile soil in place. Mountain people from Southeast Asia too follow similar method of farming. The main crop of these mountain regions are tea and coffee. In contrast to the Inca people, there are these slash and burn farmers who don't care about the environment. As the name suggests, they first slash the trees and then burn them down to clear the ground for farming. On the ground, they plant a quick growing crop. After a few years, the fertile land becomes useless for farming as there are no trees to hold the rich soil. And when the rain comes, it washes away all the fertile soil. Under such circumstances, the farmers have no choice but to move elsewhere in search of new forest to follow the same procedure of slash and burn in the process destroying another patch of land. Yaks are one of the most versatile animals on the mountains and people have exploited it to their fullest advantage. Thus, yaks have become important aspect in the lives of the mountain people. They can walk on the dangerous snow-covered Himalayan trails and people use them to transport load. They are used to plow fields. They provide milk and wool. Mountain people use yak dung for fire and their hair is used for making ropes, sacks, blankets and tents. Even the bones of yaks are used as tool. So, nothing that a yak provides is wasted. Mountains also provide immense wealth. People have mined and quarried the rocks of mountains for thousands of years for their precious minerals like gold, silver, tin copper and lead along with diamonds and other semi-precious stones. Mining created many more demands like the need for wood to support the shafts and tunnels. This led people to cut the forest for timber. Houses were required by the miners so they quarried the stones and cut even more trees to build colonies for them to live. They built roads to connect them to nearby cities. The raw materials available inspired the people to establish many more industries. Thus, like a chain of events, one thing led to another and the entire mountain biome was transformed. For example, the mountains of America see the felling of many trees because of the commercial logging industry. The timber from the forest is used to meet the ever-growing needs of the paper industry also in the construction of the house. A fear has started to grip the people that cutting off trees at such a pace will one day make the trees disappear from the mountains. People have risen to the occasion and have started planting trees in many parts of the world to make up for the cut trees but unless and until every country comes forward in this endeavor not much can be done to save the mountain biome. Once upon a time, the high-rise mountain had a very few or no human settlement, so the upper area of mountains remained unspoiled. But this is not the case today. The world's population is growing at a fast rate. 
and to meet the water demands of the growing population, dams have been built on many mountain rivers. Mountains today are exploited more for their leisure activities than for their mineral wealth. Mountain sports like skiing, climbing, hiking, mountain biking and ecotourism attract millions of people to the mountains every year. This in turn has provided employment to many, but there is always the danger of badly managed tourism that can harm the natural environments. On the brighter side, a well-managed tourism industry is perhaps the best for protecting the last of the world's great mountain wilderness. The Himalayas are the tallest mountains of planet Earth. It was formed as the landmass of India collided with the continent of Asia, in the process squashing and folding the land for millions of years. Even today, the soaring peak of the Earth's tallest mountains are rising. The Himalayas include planet Earth's 15 highest mountains. These mountains have fascinated and challenged people to scale its height and Mount Everest being the tallest of them all has been attracting mountaineers to reach its peak. The first seven attempts to climb Mount Everest resulted in failure. Then, in the year 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay reached the top of the Everest. After their feat, more than 600 climbers belonging to 20 countries have been successful in scaling the heights of Mount Everest. The people who created a milestone in their accomplishment include Tom Whittaker and Reinhold Messner. While Tom Whittaker was the first disabled climber to climb Mount Everest in the year 1998 with an artificial leg. Reinhold Messner was the first to reach the peak without oxygen. Such is the fascination of climbing the Mount Everest that a guide by the name Ang Rita has so far scaled the Everest 10 times. But such kinds of missions come with casualties and are often fatal. A minimum of 100 climbers have not returned in what is considered to be one of the ultimate climbing glory. They all died. Heights above 25,000 feet are known as the death zone. The mountaineers climbing to such great height get out of breath and have to move very slowly. The reason for this breathlessness is that the air at the top of a mountain is thinner than the air at the sea level. The mountaineers scaling such heights should carry supply of oxygen to protect themselves. The Himalayas offer great picturesque views and is home to many cities, wildlife and is the source of the Ganges, the most sacred river of the Hindus. The river Ganges flows through India and Bangladesh, then falls into the Indian Ocean. The Valley of Flowers National Park has hundreds of varieties of wildflower species spread across the small reserve. Govind National Park is home to the rare snow leopard situated in the higher parts of Indian Himalayan Reserve. Karakoram Pass is one of the highest trade routes on earth and links India with China. In the foothills of Himalayas lies Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. The capital city has great many temples and as many monkeys around these temples. The monkeys are considered to be sacred by the local people of Kathmandu. Lhasa, the capital city of Tibet, has beautiful buildings. One of them being magnificent Potala Palace. The palace has more than 1,000 rooms. The natural process that can completely change the face of the earth keeps occurring on this planet. It is also responsible for the shape and size that the mountains take. These changes can sometimes be very subtle, while sometimes it can be very violent and deadly, totally damaging the biome in which it occurs. One of the forces that continuously alter the shape of the mountains is 
the forces that rise up from deep within the earth's crust. Volcanoes, earthquakes can change the mountain's shape in sudden and deadly manner. While the wind, rain, frost and rivers mold the mountains in many, many years. It is difficult to predict how mountains might change in future. Huge avalanches of snow can smash their way to acres of forest. A volcano can blow the top of the mountain and completely change the shape of the mountain after the eruption. Earthquakes do make the mountains change their shape either by becoming higher or getting lower than it was before. Mount St. Helens in Northwest USA was shaken down to half after a massive earthquake struck on 18th May 1980. This in turn sparked the rise of molten rock from deep underground and huge quantity of rock and ash were blasted out of the volcano. In just 15 minutes, the smoke from the crater shot up to a gigantic height of 80,000 feet. To compare the damage done to the trees by the volcano, if the trees blown were to be put end to end, they would stretch from the earth all the way to moon and back, not once, but full two times. But there are many changes happening in the mountains, which are not natural, but man-made. Global warming is another danger that also can trigger changes. Red cars and factories burn fossil fuel like coal and petrol. They release carbon dioxide in atmosphere. This gas stops the heat from escaping into space and planet gradually becomes warm. No one exactly knows how the global warming will change the Earth's climate in the coming years. But effects have started to show on the face of the planet Earth. Like the glaciers of the mountains are getting smaller. And skiing season in Alps is getting shorter. The world's population is growing at a very fast pace. And mountains are being exploited like never before for more and more of their minerals, timber and water. The demand for irrigation industry has also increased. Islands have been exploited for their source of fresh water. People have dammed many rivers and created reservoirs. And they are getting ready to build many more dams on the rivers without realizing that every reservoir built a valley and the wildlife surviving in it are flooded. Many young people have left their abode in mountains and have shifted to cities and town to seek work. This has led to extinctions of traditions and cultures in the mountains. It is important to restore these age-old traditions and it can be done by encouraging people to visit mountains for leisure and many outdoor recreations. Tourism does less damage than mining or drilling in the mountain biomes and it also helps the people living on mountains to survive.